Causes Group. Today, uh, we are going to talk about Tasmanian state nomination. And I have my colleague with me, Suman Casey, who is also a registered migration agent. So we are going to cover both of the topics. Uh, both of us are going to cover the topics that are uh, that are required for you to understand the Tasmanian state nomination program for 190 and 491 visa. So the topics that we are going to cover today is uh, in Tasmania, state nomination process, eligibility criteria for 190 and 491, priority attributes, which is the gold pass, green pass, or orange pass, Tasmanian critical list, what are the occupations that are included in it, and what are the general occupations that we generally see, Tasmanian skill occupation list, which is the TSOL, uh, some tips and uh, tricks that you can apply in your case, depending on your situation. And lastly, it will be followed by a question and answer where me and my colleague Suman will be answering the questions for you. So during the session, if you have any questions, please feel free to put those questions in the comment box and we will try and answer those questions at the end of the session when we reach the question answer sessions. Now, the next thing that we're going to discuss is what is the current program status? So currently, this, uh, the uh, program is not open at the moment. The Tasmanian government and all the other state governments are waiting for final allocations from federal government. Once the allocation is received, then only the Tasmanian government uh, will be able to, uh, you know, open the applications for, for the uh, for the new applicants. Right? The new applicants, uh, new requirements will only apply for the applicants who are lodging an application from this year, July 2022. Uh, and the overall migration program 2022-23 has been designed to boost Australian economy to recover the um, after the post you know, after the pandemic environment. Uh, the number of visas allocated by the department in the current financial year, the new migration program allocation in 2022-23, has gone up from 11,200 in the last financial year to 20,000 in this financial year. That means it's 78.5% up compared to the previous financial year, which is a good news for all the candidates because that means you know there will be more seats, that means more invites. And for 491 visa, from 11,200, it has gone up to 25,000. That is 123% up. So that means, again, another good news is for the applicants who are seeking for 491. That means there will be more seats, more uh, invitations. In the previous year, Tasmania had total 1,100 allocations for 190 and 2,200 for 491, which we expect that, you know, because it's increased by 78% for 190 and by 123% for 491, the proportion of that should be increased in the 190 and 491 allocation for Tasmania as well. So if you count by that, maybe, you know, almost close to 4,000 allocations for 491 and maybe close to 1500 location or more than 1500 allocation for 190 would be expected. The final allocations will only happen after October 2022, which is the after the budget. But in the meantime, the government will probably allocate some interim allocations to all states, which they can use it until October. Now, Tasmanian state nomination process has changed compared to previous uh, financial year where in the past you used to just simply meet the nomination requirement and apply for a state nomination. Uh, yes, certain criteria still remains the same, but there is a bit of change in the process. So number one is for all the states that you must meet the Department of Home Affairs criteria, which is the minimum requirement for 190 is 65 points, including five points from the state. And for 491, the minimum points is also 65, including 15 points from the state. So for 190, technically you just need minimum 60 points on your own and the five will be given by the state. And for 491, you need 50 on your own and the 15 will be allocated by the state. You also need a skills assessment in your nominated occupation. Your occupation must be on either a medium and long-term skill list or a short-term skill occupation list. And you must have a minimum English language requirement met as well, which is at least competent English that is set by the department. Some states may Establish additional English language requirement. However, in our case, there is nothing much in Tasmania uh, that we will discuss anyways in the uh, upcoming slides. Uh, then after you meet the minimum criteria, you need to register your interest on the suitable 
pathway for 491 or 190. And if you're competitive enough, you will be invited by the Tasmanian state to apply for a state nomination. So before it's unlike before where you just meet the criteria and directly lodge an application. Now there's one more layer in between where you lodge an interest, you register your interest first, and then the system will determine whether you can just go ahead and apply straight away. If you meet in the gold pass, if you are in the green pass, then you have to wait. We will explain that in the next slide. But basically you register your interest, then depending on the competitiveness you have, you will be invited to apply for a state nomination. And if Tasmania approves your state nomination, then you will be receiving an invitation from the Department of Home Affairs in your skill select. And then you can go ahead and apply for the visa. Now to apply for the visa, you will get at least 60 days to launch the 190491 in your skill select. Now coming back to the next part, which is the most important part uh, as well, because this is the part where the system determines whether you will be able to go through and apply for a state nomination straight away, or you will be given a ticket or a pass, green pass or orange pass, and then you'll have to wait. So there are, they have divided the uh, priorities into three different sections. Now, if you get a gold pass after you submit your profile, which is an online profile that you'll have to create, which is an interactive eligibility checker uh, to find the success, prospects of your success, and you will be able to register your interest. Now, when you register your interest, the system will it automatically determine and say, hey, you're a gold pass. That means you will be able to lodge an application straight away and you'll be able to move ahead and submit an application. You don't have to wait for a Tasman to invite. If you're given a gold, a green pass, then you will have to wait and you can't lodge an application straight away. However, you will be there in the queue for the few weeks and when your competitiveness becomes good enough, they will probably invite you in a few weeks time. And the last one is the orange orange one, which is the least priority. That means you will need to wait for around six months. And if there is a space for your uh, application, then they will probably invite you. If not, then you might have to relodge your uh, registration of interest. Now, the new framework will still reflect what Tasmanian government was already doing in the practice before. So the process will pretty, pretty much remain the same, except these layers being added. Now I will hand it over to my colleague Suman, who will walk you through the six pathways that Tasmania has announced. And then we will follow it by the question and answer. So please, again, you know, if you do have questions, please feel free to post your questions in the comment box. And at the end of the session, once my colleague Suman explains all the pathways, we will move to the question and answer. And then you can ask your questions in the comment box and we will uh, address those questions. So Suman, over to you. Thank you, Vaibhav. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Suman. I'm a registered magazine agent. So, um, as Vaibhav already mentioned about the you know suitable pathway, ROI, and uh, all the things. So now we need to find. You need to check whether you are eligible for the any of the pathway offered by the last Tasmania. So they have a Tasmanian skill employment pathway, which is offered to 190 and 491 both visa. So to get the to be eligible under this pathway. For the 190, you need to you need to have a six months of work experience in the TO SOL list, and also you need to have a skill segment in the TO, uh, which is Tasmania skill occupation list. So if you have a six months of job work experience in the occupation, which is mentioned in the TO SOL list, and also the skill assessment, then you qualify for the 190. But if you do not have a skill assessment related to your TO SOL list, but you do have a six months of work experience, then you you could qualify for the 491 visa. And if your employment is related to the skill assessment and TO SOL list, you just need three months of work experience. You may work in the skill level one to three or skill level four to five. For applicants working in the skill level one to three only, if you are a subcontractor, you need to have a relevant skill assessment plus at least 12 months of business activity in Tasmania. For applicants working in skill level four to five only, there must be opportunity for a career advancement and you will also need a inversion from the, uh, in writing from the employer. So there are some common criteria that applies to both 190 and 491. <clears throat> so for example, you need to have a relevant qualification related to your employment and they do not accept RPL or online study. And another one is 20 hours per week and employment in closely related occupations will be considered. Your employer must be well established and that has been actively operated for at least past 12 months. Your wages and other employment conditions must be no less favorable 
then those offered to Australian citizen and PR. Your employment must be genuine, ongoing, and at least you need to have a three months of remaining on a contract, and your contract can be a casual as well. If you have a qualification through the RPL and skill assessment, they will assess the uh, employment in that uh, area. And the following employments will not be considered. For example, a taxi drivers for delivery, so contracting employment, uh, so sorry, of uh, supermarket and service uh, station will not be considered. If you have a subcontracting implement, will be only accepted where the applicant has a better skill assessment. Mobile phones, sales support, and implement related to the limited service restaurants like fast food takeaway uh, and limited cafe, they will not be considered. And also, like some occupation in the task and skill occupation list, have some caveats. For example, for the motor mechanics and web developer, your employer must have been operated for at least three years. So, for this category, you also need to be qualified. And also, like for the some occupation, your employer also need to be qualified. So now, once you know your uh, eligibility criteria, then you need to make your application completely because Asmina is only going to invite if invite you if your application is very competitive as compared to other applications. So to get the goal pass, you need to work at least three months in the critical role. So there are 139 occupations in the critical uh, critical role. So that includes IT, engineering, social worker, and health-related occupations. Unfortunately, there are no accountants, no cook, chef, and no employers. So if you are working in the just for three months in the uh, critical role, then you will be getting the goal pass, and then you can apply for the uh, uh, you, you can apply for the nominations straight away. And if you do not have a goal pass, then you can think of green pass as well. So you don't have to meet all of them. You, you just can meet only one of them. But more attributes you have, the better chance you will be. So. For the green pass, you must be currently working for at least six months in the task management skill occupation list. And also that role is related to your skill assessment. So there are some popular occupations, for example, like accounting, cafe manager, marketing occupations, engineering, IT chip teaching, health related occupations, social worker, cook, chef, motor mechanics, they all are in the task management skill occupation list. So if you are working there for six months and have a skill assessment, then you, you're gonna get the green pass. Or if you, if you are not meeting these attributes, then you may be employed in task manager for more than two years in the skill role one to three related to your, uh, related to your skill assessment. Or you may also meet the attributes uh, by just uh, uh, being employed there for uh, in, uh, two years prior to in, uh, industry experience. Or if you have a like salary that is, you know, uh, uh, that exceeds the Austrian average. Now, for the warrant pass, you may again, you may you know get any of the uh, following attributes. For example, you have a qualification related to your current employment. Again, the RPL is not accepted, or you may have lived in task management for more than two years, or have a proficient or superior English, and you're dependent employed in skill role, which is one to three, or running a business for six months, or dependent completed study or class when study, which is minimum of uh, of six. Or dependent has lived in Tasmania for at least six months, or you have any close family living uh, living in Tasmania. So you do not have to meet all of the requirements, but if you meet just only one of the attributes, then you will get the pass. So now I have got the one example for, for the uh, skill implement pathway. So I have got the applicant A and applicant B. So applicant A is a registered nurse and she holds the um, skill assessment as a registered nurse and has been working for six months. And the applicant B is a, has a skill assessment in accounting and working at the edge care for six months in Tasmania, have got the certificate three in individual career. So now to get the goal pass, so as applicant A is already working in, uh, is, is a registered nurse and then uh, registered nurse is in the critical role, so, role, that's why applicant will get the goal pass and then uh, applicant will can apply for the nomination straight away. But for the applicant B, edge care, the employment edge care AIN is not the critical loss, the role, role. That's why um, applicant B will not be getting the goal pass. Now, moving on to the green. So, again, AIN is not in the task meaning skill occupation list. Again, um, and also the, it is not in a skill role of one to three, it is a, a skill level of five. And for the two years of priority experience, so you may be like if the applicant B has a Two years of experience at the AAM, then they they will get the green pass. So again, pay if the pay pay must be pay maybe they said they may get the um 
uh, green pass if the pay or salary exceeds the austin average. So now, if applicant B is not meeting any of the priority attributes in the green pass, then then they can go under the orange pass and see. So now for the orange pass, like have qualification related to employment. That means the qualification of certificate three depends upon if that is uh, acquired uh, from the RPL, then they are not going to accept that one. Lived in Tasmania for two years, may get attributes if applicant has lived in, in more, or more than two years, may get the attributes if applicant has got the proficient or superior English. And also like uh, they may get the another attributes if the partner is currently employed in the rural or one to three or running a business. And they also may get the honor attributes uh, if the dependent company that is study there has lived in Tasmania for six months and will have a family living in Tasmania. So now under the pathway, which is a graduate pathway, uh, graduate pathway being very popular in Tasmania. So for 190, you need to complete two years of study in Tasmania. And for the 491, you need to complete one year of study in Tasmania. And if someone has done a two year, two year PhD in Tasmania, they will be eligible for 190 as well. And some of the common criteria that applies to for the 190 and 491 in the Tasmanian graduate pathway. So courses must be diploma or, diploma or higher, or it can be certificate three if the qualification is related to the major group three or four. So group three means technician and trade occupations, for example, pharmacy technician, motor mechanics, cook chef, baker, bricklayer, plumber. Group four means communities and personal service, service worker, indoor nurse, community worker, beside service services officer. You may combine, combine two courses to meet two years of study if that awards overall one qualification. For example, certificate three and four in commercial cookery will be accepted, but diploma of leadership management followed by advanced diploma of leadership management will not be accepted. And COE must be provided for all the enrollments after 30 June 2022. So any students who, wants, who have been studying there after 30 June 2022, you must hold the COE in the graduate pathway list. All the study must be completed face to face and online study will not be considered. So now to make the application competitive in the graduate, again, they have a pass system, gold, green, and orange. To get the goal, you need to, if you if you work there in the critical role for three months, then you are you are likely to get the you will get the gold pass and you can apply for the nomination straight away. Green pass for the green pass currently working for six months in TOSUL list or in the role related to your skill assessment or employed, employed in the Tasmania for two years in the skills role, one to three related to your skill assessment. Two year PhD completed in Tasmania, employed in Tasmania for at least three months related to your skill assessment or Tasmanian study, operated a Tasmanian, Tasmanian business related to your skill assessment or study of at least for six months. Have job offer related to your skill assessment or Tasmanian study, business need to be operating for more than five, five, five years. And for the orange pass, you may meet any of these following attributes. Employed for six weeks in related to your skill assessment or Tasmanian study. Employed in Tasmania for at least three months in skill level one to three, but not related to your skill level. Employed in skill level four to five, but have related of qualification related to your employment, RPL on and online qualification not accepted. Evidence of job interview related to your skill assessment or Tasmanian study from established business, which has been operating here for three months, will also give you the one of the orange attributes. Completed placement of at least 400 hours, studied related to your critical roles. Comments PhD after the completing undergraduate study in Tasmania also will give you the orange list. So if you have just commenced the PhD, then you will get the orange pass. So no other study residents or, or uh, no other Australian residents will study, live in Tasmania for over four years, Proficient or superior English, dependent employed in skill level one to three, or running a business for at least um, uh, six months. Dependent completed study minimum of AQF six. Dependent has lived in Tasmania for at least six months. Close family living in Tasmania. So if you have a dependent and um, they are living in Tasmania, also you will get the warrant pass. And if once you get the warrant pass, you may get you may have to wait around six months to get the invitation. So now another one example too, which is for the graduate pathway. So I have got the applicant A and applicant B. So applicant A completed one year of diploma of community services in Tasmania, have a skill system in IT, and now working with support worker for more than three months. Whereas for the applicant B, completed one year of diploma of community services and his skill system in IT, but working as a cleaner. So difference between these two, two are 
they both have studied one year of course in Tasmania, but they are working some more. Applicant one is working in the field of uh, his study, and applicant B is not working in, in the is working as a cleaner cleaner. So goal pass, the both of them are not getting the goal pass, but the green pass, yes, applicant A will be getting the green pass because applicant A have been working employed in of uh, of three months related to the Tasmanian study. Applicant B. Applicant B studied community services, but working at the cleaner, so that's why applicant B is not going to get the green pass. And orange depends upon the attributes, the following attributes like this. So applicant, uh, whether applicant will get the uh, orange or not depends upon the attributes. Number three, so another criteria, another path, another pathway for the 190 and 491 is Tasmanian established residence pathway. So it is again offered to 190 and 491. So for the 190, you need to you, you must be living in Tasmania for at least three years with no more no more than fifty percent of your total residence spent in another state. Let's say like if you are already in the other state, let's say like you stayed in other state for four years and then you went to Tasmania and then you just been living there for three years, you do not qualify for the 190 because you have to spend more than a 40 or 50 percent of your uh, total residence in the other states. And you must be currently working and have a one year of experience in last or have a one year of experience in last two years in the skill level one to three, or you must be having a 18 months of experience in last three years in the skill level four to five, or you may have operated a business of for at least two years with a taxable income of fifty three thousand nine hundred dollars. So you may meet any of these three criteria, any of these criteria, and then live there for three years, then you may qualify for the 190 regardless of your study, regardless of your skill assessment. For the 491, again, you, you must be living there for two years with no more than 50% of residents in Spain in other states. I are currently working and have experience of six months of experience in the last one year in the skill level one to three, or you're currently working and have 12 months of experience in the last 18 months in the skill level four to five. So this is the graduate pathway criteria. So this is the established uh, residence pathway criteria, sorry. And for the, to make the competitive uh, application in this pathway, again, they have introduced the three types of paths, gold, green, and uh, orange. For the gold, working in the critical roles. For the green, under this pathway, currently working for, for at least three months in the task minute skill level vocation list. Two years of total experience in the skill level one or one to three in task minute related to skill assessment. Three months of work experience in one to skill level one to three in Tasmania reality experience. So either you have a two years of experience or three months of work experience. So warrants for the warrants pass, um, you need to have a follow one any of the following attributes: twelve months of work experience in skill level one to three, but not related to your skill assessment. Have qualification related to your current employment role, RPL and online study not accepted. Two years of prior Australian study experience related, related to your current employment. Current employer has been operating in Tasmania for at least five years. Resided in Tasmania for more than four years. Also, you can get the uh, warrant pass under this um, pathway. Salary higher than average uh, Australian earning. Business operated employed at least three local Australian citizens, permanent work provisional uh, visa holders. Or if you have a proficient or superior English, depending on employee in skill role one to three, depending on company start in study, and depending on has lived in Tasmania for six months, or you have a close family living in Tasmania, you also get the priority attributes in the OS pass. Now for the established residence, um, I've got the one another example. So applicant A and B. So applicant A did not study in Tasmania, but have a skill assessment in accounting. Lived in Tasmania for two years, now working in the accounting for three months. So goal pass, no support worker. Uh, okay, here I have support worker not in the critical list. And green pass, yes, employment, have an employment of three months later in Tasmania study. So applicant, applicant A will be likely to get the green pass. And applicant B did not study in Tasmania, have a space in accounting, lived in Tasmania for two years, now working in the restaurant manager for one year and have quality to uh, restaurant manager as well. So again, green pass, both of them are not doing uh, uh, getting the green pass. Again, for the wooden pass, uh, depends upon the following attributes, they will be getting the wooden pass. So now for the fourth one, which is the 
Tasmanian business operator pathway. So this pathway is only available for 491 visa, not for 190. So to be eligible under this pathway, you must be you must have established an operator business in Tasmania for 12 months. And you must your business must have provided income of at least $45,815 only. And business operated, if your business is operated before the 15th of April 2022, it can be operated for six months only. And then in this pathway, subcontractors are not eligible. Again, for the gold pass, working in a critical world will give you the gold pass. For the green pass, if you have invested over $200,000 in the current business operation, or business operated operation generated over the $500,000 in the past year, or business employees over 10 Australian citizens, permanent or provisional visa holders, then you are then you will get the green pass. So if you do not meet the green pass, then you may also qualify for the Warren pass. For that, you need to have a qualification related to business, have a skill assessment related to current business activities, operated business in Tasmania for more than 18 consecutive months, have at least three full-time employees who are Australian citizens or permanent residents or provisional visa holders, Residing in Tasmania for more than two years and earning, earning from business higher than average Australian earnings. Have a proficient or superior English, depending on LinkedIn, uh, including Tasmania uh, skill role one to three, or running a business for at least six months, depending has lived in Tasmania for at least six months. And also, if you have a close family living in Tasmania, you also get the um, attributes from the Warren's past. So, another pathway is. Um, overseas applicant. So this is an overseas applicant job offer. So this is also again available for 491 only, not for the 190. So for, to be eligible for this pathway, you need to receive a formal job offer in Tasmania related to your nominated occupation. So and also you you and your dependent must not have lived in another state, Australian state in the last uh, in the last one year. Your employer must have oil established business and that has been operating in Tasmania for at least three years. At least, sorry, I need to, at least um, 12 months. There must be a genuine and ongoing position. And there is only one pass available for this uh, pathway, which is a gold. So if you receive a job offer from oil, oil established uh, Tasmanian business, which is directly related to your skill assessment, then you will receive a gold pass. So last one is uh, overseas applicants. So this is for the 491 only, and then it only operates when you receive an invitation from the Tasmanian government. So migration Tasmania need to contact you to apply for the ROI. Your occupation must be in the overseas skill occupation list. For example, business accounting, finance, IT, engineering, these are the some of the occupations uh, in the overseas skill occupation list. You or any of your dependent must have lived in Australian state or um, must not have lived in Australian state or territory in the last 12 months. You need to have a sufficient fund of six months and you need to provide the evidence of at least two uh, Tasmanian employee, employers. And this would that should ind indicate that your business is, that business is interested to in discussing your employment opportunity with you when you come to Tasmania. So again, the past type is the only one past type you have here, which is gold. If you are invited by Tasmanian migration, then you have a Thus, you have a gold pass, then you can apply for the nominations. So, final tips and summary. So, again, this is the invitation based program only. You can directly apply. So, ROI is the first step, and the EG criteria will allow you to lose the ROI. Priority attributes are not mandatory, they will give you the extra credit, credit. they will make your application competitive. So, you try to focus on getting the priorities as many as possible, and attributes are not listed in order of importance. The new frameworks reflects what the Tasmanian government were already doing it, and it's actually not new. It's actually uh, they are just being more transparent now. So only competitive applications will be invited, and there might be other pathways available if one does not offer you, and there will be an online easy checker to find the pursuit of success. So now is the question and answer session. We can take your questions. If you have any questions, you can ask in the Facebook or in the YouTube or in LinkedIn. Then we will. Uh, answer your questions. Right. Thank you, Simon, for such a detailed explanation. Now, uh, we have some questions from the viewers. So, I'll, I'll, we'll go one by one so that we can take each question. So, the first one is Sandeep Kaur Sindhu. The question is that I am an enrolled nurse in Victoria. Can I apply for 190 in Tasmania? So, Suman, would you like to take this question? Yes, I would like to. Um, so, 
He is in Rome, North in Victoria, right? Yes. So, so for the so let's go for the pathway. So he would be more likely to fall into the first pathway, which is a um, skill improvement pathway. So, so for the skill improvement pathway, you need to have a six months of work experience in the task manager skill occupation list. And then yeah. once you have a well, once you have a six months of work experience, then you can apply for the one ninety from the task manager. Right, and the uh, the enroll nurse is on T as well. Enroll nurse, uh, to double check that one. Sure. Uh, so if, if the enroll nurse is on T as well, yes, you can apply for uh, the, uh, you, uh, the, you can register for a, in, your interest in uh, Tasmania after you complete six months of work experience in Tasmania. So uh, that's how, you know, you yes. have first move and then work there for six months. Yes. Uh, do we have a confirmation, Suman, whether this yeah, is midwife the is on the list? In Ronos is in the list, yes. Yes, it is on T as well. So yes, Sandeep, uh, you can apply, but you just have to move first to Tasmania and first live and work there for six months for you to qualify. The next question that we have is uh, Ankush Patel. What is the requirement for a trade course done in Victoria, Melbourne? So again, a lot of trade occupations are on TSOL. Uh, so Ankush, what you can do is yes, you know, you're as a part of your trade course, you are required to complete your job ready program. So let's say if you happen to complete your job ready program in Tasmania, then while you complete your job ready program, you have already met the criteria for a state nomination from Tasmania as well. So if you move there and work there for six months or 12 months because your uh, job ready program will require to work there for 12 months, then you would already meet the requirement under the Tasmanian skill employment pathway. And that means you can easily get through a green pass, right? Which generally increases your chances of getting an invitation for 190. So you just have to work there for six months. But as I said, you'll have to work for 12 months because you'll have to complete the job ready program anyways. But if you do complete a job ready program in Victoria and then move to Tasmania, then you'll have to work six months. Uh, the next question is uh, Dhruv. I'm working as a business analyst in Tasmania. So Suman, would you like to take this question? Yes. So the question is, I'm working as a business analyst in Tasmania since last six months as a permanent employee, have a positive skills assessment as a business analyst, but business analyst is not on TSOL. What to do? So if your occupation is not in the TSOL list, then you will qualify, you will still qualify for the 491 option because 491, um, in the task manager skill improvement option, you do not have to have a, your uh, uh, your occupation does not have to be in the TOSL list. So you do qualify for the 491 option. And then once you qualify for the, for the 491 option, then you work on the priority attributes. Right. And, uh, you know, you can also probably try to apply for other skills assessment that might be on uh, the list, right? For example, I think there are other IT occupations which are listed on the TSOL, if I'm not wrong, Suman? Yes, I would like to share the screen. So for example, uh, ICT managers, ICT managers, ICT project managers. Yeah, so, yeah, so basically you can try for those occupations. And if your employment is assessed relevant to that occupation, then probably your chances of getting the invite will go higher, right? So yes, while, you know, it's not on TSOL, your direct occupation, but you can always go through this pathway to find an alternative occupation, which is ICT managers, or I think there are more other IT occupations as well that you can look at and which falls closely related to your occupation. If you do have programming duties in your uh, job, then you can also look at the uh, programming of occupations uh, so basically what you do is, you know, try for a different occupation, which can be assessed related to your employment. And if it is assessed, then also you can easily get an invitation from uh, the Tasmanian graduate pathway, uh, sorry, the Tasmanian skilled employment pathway. Uh, so I hope you get that answer, Dhruv. Uh, so the next question is from the Sai topic. Hi, Vaibhav. My question is my, is if my wife has come, was, 
com has completed MPA from Tasmania um, College and has sec also secured a permanent job as a financial officer. Has already completed five months working in aged care, which is a critical sector. I am working with the Department of Health as an IT officer from five months. We are in Australia since January 2021. Do you think we can come under the goal criteria and are eligible for 190? So for your wife to come under gold criteria, your wife's occupation must be on mm -hmm. a critical role list, right? And if accounting is not on that list, and if she's working as an accountant for, uh, let's say, you know, for a critical sector, that doesn't mean that she will qualify uh, for that one. So basically, because accounting is not on a critical list, you will not be able to directly get into the uh, state nomination from Tasmania for gold pass because, but you can definitely apply for a Tasmanian graduate pathway because you have completed two years of course. So Suman, would you be able to explain further on this? Okay, so definitely not the gold pass. So for the green pass, let's say like uh, you are currently working um, uh, working for at least six months in Tasmania. Yes, yes. Okay, so as an accountant, accounting is on a TS as well list. So you will be getting the green pass. Sorry? Is accounting is on the TOS list. So is it on the list or it is not on the list? It's on the list. It is on the list. So you will be able to apply for uh, the 4190 through the study as well as working in, in yes. TSOL occupation in Tasmania. Yes. So your chances is really good, uh, Mr. Desai Taufik. So yes, you know, you cannot go on the gold pass, but your chances is really great in the green pass anyways. The next question, Suman, for you is, is it compulsory for cafe or restaurant manager to have seven each working category? Also, my employer changed AB and last month for some reason. Is that all right? Please suggest because I'm working in my field from last seven months, 35 hours per week. So Suman, let me rephrase the question. The client is working as a restaurant manager uh, in Tasmania. The company has changed the ABN recently. And the client is working 35 hours per week. Do they need seven each or not? And also, what is the chances? To meet the eligibility criteria, they don't need a seven each. And for the attributes for the skill here, uh, if you have a seven, you will be getting the orange orange pass. But if you do qualify for the green pass, then you don't have to consider for the getting the orange pass. So you may meet any of these other criteria for the orange pass. For example, if you have lived in Tasmania for two years, then you will be getting the orange pass instead of having a seven. Right. And I think uh, Cafe and Restaurant Manager is on the list for uh, TSOL. So I think you can easily qualify for a green pass. Right, Suman? TSOL, just two seconds. Yeah, it's here on your list. Yeah. yeah yes, Cafe Manager. Yes, it is there on the list. So I've checked it as well. So I think yes, it's easy done. You know, you can qualify uh, Milan. And even if your company has changed an ABN, uh, you know, that's fine as long as the company can write a letter saying that we had changed an ABN for so-and-so reason, and that would just do the job. Right, Suman? Yes. Yeah. Now, again, the question from this side topic was that he is living in Tasmania since January 2021. So I think one more thing that we can add is that, you know, if because you're living there for a long time, two years, uh, you can also... Uh, fall under the orange zone as well, where you lived in Tasmania for two years. And, uh, you know, but at the same time, because you're working in the critical list, you're sorry, if, if you're working in an TSOL list, you already qualify for a green pass. Mm -hmm. The next question is Shanil Prasad. Uh, so question, Suman, for you yep. is, if I get 491 visa for Tasmania, can I move to South Australia or have to study for, uh, stay there for three years in Tasmania. So uh, once you get the 491 or 190 from Tasmania, you are you have an obligation to stay in Tasmania for entire. So let's say like for the 190, you need to stay for there for two years, and the, for the 491, you need to stay for at least three years because you will be signing a declaration saying that uh, you stay in the uh, Tasmania for uh, uh, once you get the visa. And I think you know if once you get the visa. If you have some genuine reasons, yes, you can relocate. But if you do not have the genuine reasons, you do not, you should not um, 
you know relocate to another state and you should always comply with your obligations towards the state right and i think the only last question we're left with is um uh, gihan eranda hi my concern is that now i was complete i have completed age care one year course i have skills assessment as an internal auditor what should i do in the future suman so skills in internal auditor right so let's find and out client is working as an age care sorry completed the course one year course in age care okay so now we have our occupations internal auditor in the tasmanian skill occupation list so you have completed one year of age care course from the let's say tasmania right so is the applicant working uh, as age care right uh the applicant has not mentioned whether he is working or not so uh, not too sure because what he has mentioned is he's got a skills assessment but let's assume that he would be working somewhere closely related to age care okay. skill level 1 to 3 so it's that is not the skill level 1 to 3 so let's say like okay employed in tasmania for at least 3 months related to skill level or tasmania study so if you have studied in tasmania for age care related course then you will meet the one of the green attributes then then you can you can get the green attributes right i understand so basically because you have completed one year study you are employed in tasmania for at least 3 months related to your skills assessment or you are not for your tasmania study so if you work related to tasmania study you can still because you don't have a job as an internal auditor for example and but you have a job as in 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 um, you know age care then yes you can still qualify for a green zone you know green pass for 190491 I think that's pretty much it for the questions. Uh, so if that calls for the end of this session today, and we thank you everyone to join us uh, in the live session and understand the Tasman and State Normation criteria. But if you do have more questions, we are located in Sydney, Parramatta, and Bankstown. So if you know you can visit your closest branch, and our agents will be definitely be able to help you with a precise information. very customized for your particular case so we thank you for joining us today and we wish you good luck for your future applications thank you thank you everyone